so uh, now I'd like to bring in our next speaker who is joining us all the way from China. So uh, our next speaker is uh, the senior AI director of Tencent. He has built his expertise in both engineering and marketing and to talk about innovations in AI for global success. Please welcome Mr. Nanbeng. Yeah, uh, good afternoon and uh, thanks um, to Al to, uh, for this uh, uh, wonderful introduction and also thanks to uh, Apara uh, for this opportunity to share with you uh, some of our latest progress and also uh, our opinions uh, for AI and also uh, what Tencent has been doing uh, for the latest several years uh, in AI. Uh, my name is Nan Deng and uh, I'm the Senior AI Product Marketing Manager in, in Tencent Cloud. And uh, actually, I've been working in the AI area for more than five years. And we have actually um, applied AI in a lot of different industries and sectors. Uh, today, I'm going to share uh, some of the latest chains and also uh, Tencent applications with you. So um, first of all, I'd like to say um, AI is not a new thing, but actually AI has been developing for, uh, for actually about 20 to 30 years. Uh, but the previous AI was not actually applied a lot since there was a great limit in the computing power and also uh, uh, and it's very limited in the, in the real use scenarios. But actually uh, in the late, latest 10 years, uh, because of the uh, deep learning and also about the, the low cost of, uh, of, uh, of a high, computi high, computi high computation power, the AI has been really uh, very, very popular uh, in the late 10 years. So um, what's new in the 2020? So actually AI has been um, very popular, but for 20, actually we have a lot of different um, new coming chains. And also we have a lot of um, the old technologies which are going away, uh, which has been proved uh, not really actually penetrated in the market very well. So um, this is the Gartner's hype cycle for AI in 2020. So each year when we look at this uh, hype cycle, we can see uh, several uh, technology categories moving forward uh, to uh, uh, inflated in expectation or actually a uh, um, plate of productivity. So uh, in this year, there are two big mega chains which dominates this hype cycle. The first one is actually the democratization of AI. So which is uh, in other terms is to say a broader adoption of AI across uh, different uh, industries and also organizations because AI is actually being uh, really around us everywhere. Uh, the second one is the industrialization of AI platform. Uh, since AI has been developed for uh, quite a long time, so uh, the ecosystem has already formed to be uh, like the giant companies providing the platform uh, and then the small org smaller organizations are going to use these platforms to build applications in different uh, vertical scenarios. And then there are also five new uh, technology categories which has entered this hype cycle. Uh, the first one is small data. So as uh, several speakers uh, have already talked about AI today, uh, AI is still very, very dependent of uh, data. But now uh, people are still trying to figure out if we can uh, work out uh, a model with a smaller data uh, set. Uh, because in a lot of vertical areas, we really do not have a lot of uh, 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 historical data stored. So uh, small data is going to be a, quite a topic uh, for the next few years. And then the second one is generative AI. Um, the previous AI applications was mostly about the sensing. Uh, it's actually around us about what we see, about what we hear. But actually the generative AI was uh, a topic uh, until recently because uh, the technology was not actually very mature, but actually we could use AI to generate a lot of uh, 
not existing uh, data and not existing uh, uh, application. So for example, the, the gain uh, uh, has already been applied to uh, generate a lot of uh, fake images, uh, such as the deep fake, as we have already seen in the previous talks. And then the third one is the composite AI. The composite AI is actually uh, making AI technology and also a lot of other technology together to unlock more uh, scenarios. Since AI is actually only one tech, the real world is not only uh, applied by or uh, improved by one tech. With IoT, with, uh, for example, blockchain, and also a lot of other uh, new uh, coming technologies, and then we could make AI be more useful. And then the fourth is the responsible AI. So actually, there was a lot of uh, topics on the ethical and also social aspect of AI. And then so Gartner recently defined this responsible AI as a term uh, for, for this hype cycle because it's going to be very, very um, fine. A lot of uh, uh, discussions and maybe regulations are going to be around this topic. And then the last one, it thinks as customers. So it's not um, very uh, good to understand, but actually it's also kind of uh, IoT connected. Since we know the 5G is going to come out and also the, the Internet of Things sensors are going to be around us. And then uh, the customers are no longer going to be only humans. There are a lot of IoT devices are also uh, are also going to be our customers because they are going to use the AI algorithm. They are going to uh, self-organize themselves to get a better accuracy or better uh, performance. So all these five tech categories have been uh, classified in the Gartner's hype cycle. And then this is very interesting for us to look at for the next two to five years. And then there are two uh, good deployment uh, increase uh, for, uh, as Gartner has uh, predicted. The first one is the chatbot. So chatbot has been uh, actually quite mature in China, but um, I think in, the, in Gartner's point of view, maybe globally it's not still uh, uh, quite deployed. But in uh, 2020, it's going to be in, a, it's going to have a high uh, increase in terms of deployment since uh, in the pandemic, the call center has already been emptied. So people have to turn to uh, a chatbot to uh, deploy our uh, their, their call centers. And then the other one, which has been going uh, very far in the plateau of productivity is the GPU accelerators. So this one, uh, without doubt is going to be deployed by a lot more organizations and companies. So its deployment rate is going to be 20 to 50 uh, uh, percent uh, in 2020. So this is about the change in uh, for Gunners and for global point of view. And then what's actually happening in, in China in 2020. So uh, we also show you some kind of uh, uh, statistics about uh, uh, actually about AI uh, uh, companies and also uh, and also business. Uh, so let's look at first look at the AI startups. So uh, actually the the peak of AI startup funding was in 2016 and also 2017. At that time, so if you have a team and then you have a uh, like um, a high professor uh, from uh, from let's say a uh, very good university and then you are leading a team of, uh, of PhDs and working on AI, it's going to be a huge uh, plus for the investors to, uh, to be attracted because at that time it was the start of the uh, technology and then the technology itself going to attract a lot of investment and also uh, many, many, uh, chai, uh, many, many clients to try this technology. But then in the late two years, in the 2019 and 2020, uh, people are not going to just buy your uh, product based on your technology itself. It's going to be based on how can you solve the real uh, world's problems. So at that point, so the AI company is just starting to think how to uh, monetize their business model, how to really stand 
uh, in the real uh, in the real business world how to make money. And then so we can see that uh, even for Face Plus Plus for Sense Time, this kind of giant startups in China uh, for computer vision, uh, they also had some kind of difficulties going uh, IPOs. So uh, the chain is going to be commercialization to find real world problems and then solve them and also find profitable uh, business models. And then in terms of technology, we can see that we have the top 13 most deployed of AI technology. The, the most deployed technology is still computer vision. So um, as this technology is still the dominant, um, the dominant part of our world. And then uh, for the speech and also NLP technology, they are growing up, but not as mature as computer vision, since there are still a lot of limited uh, scenarios and also limited uh, uh, technology uh, defaults. And then to, uh, to blocking its way to be, um, to be getting a more uh, uh, profitable uh, business. Uh, this year, we have also an estimation uh, for how many companies in the AI startups can get profitable. Last year, it was 40%, and then this year, it has turned 70%. So this is very interesting uh, rate, since we know uh, this year, uh, companies are experiencing uh, a lot of difficulties under the pan pandemic, but actually, uh, the AI companies are finding their ways to get more profitable. Uh, as uh, they are starting to find uh, good business models. And then um, I'm going to talk to you about some of the Tencent applications. Um, actually, Tencent has been working in AI uh, for quite a long time. And also we have a lot of technology uh, base uh, and also we have a lot of uh, uh, applied areas. Tencent has a very... Um, let's say a strong strategy in AI is to make AI uh, everywhere. So uh, Tencent has a lot of research areas. We have uh, several uh, labs which are dedicated to AI. So we have uh, uh, research areas cover uh, machine learning, computer vision, speech recognition, NLP, robotics, and even uh, quantum computing. So all these research areas uh, has been the the source of our technology. And then we have the Tencent Cloud as the uh, AI, as the platform to actually empower our partners and also our clients to uh, use the technology from our research and then to be applied in different sectors. So uh, actually we have already applied the uh, AI in uh, the internal business of Tencent itself, such as gaming, uh, social uh, media, uh, content business, and also we, uh, through Tencent Cloud, we have also provided solutions and products to uh, uh, a lot of industries, such as uh, retail, uh, financial, uh, government, education, energy, etc. So it's really like making uh, AI everywhere uh, by uh, our own technology and also by our partners. So um, with this technology itself, how can AI actually help our clients. So um, every, every customer that we have talked to about for AI, actually they have only concerns on these three aspects. And also these are the three aspects which are the most important for our uh, customers. The first one is efficiency. So the efficiency to make money, the efficiency to make your business run faster. Uh, as AI can solve only a narrow uh, scenario problem. So uh, as a lot of speaker has already uh, mentioned, the efficiency is very important in a lot of uh, scenarios such as a uh, uh, human labor, uh, very human labors uh, level uh, application uh, scenario. So for example, for the call center, we have a lot of uh, people just working in the call center to uh, answer a lot of uh, uh, repetitive questions. The AI is the real big uh, power tool to uh, solve this kind of problem. So the efficiency to make our marketing, the efficiency to uh, make your uh, customers to uh, know your product is going to be very key to make more money. And then the second is to reduce cost. The cost is also a very strong point for AI. 
such as uh, uh, the example of call center and also the the kind of example for uh, the, the the internal management the internal management sometimes cost a lot of process but with ai for example with the latest rpa tool plus uh, some kind of technology such as ocr we can actually reduce a lot of uh, management time and also management staff to make the cost lower and then the third one is innovation so this is also some kind of um, uh, some kind of aspect which is very very a uh, key point to the current uh, um, to the current atmosphere since under the pandemic we have um, we have a um, term in China to say that no uh, company is a traditional company anymore so it means every company needs to go uh, online every company needs to think how to go online and also how to go digital so that is the base for innovation that is the base to to say how can my data move faster how can my data can predict my uh my uh my value etc so ai can also help in innovation can do a lot of stuff that the other technology or the old technologies could not do so this is also the point that we uh, we think are very important for our clients so efficiency cost and innovation those are the three keys that we think ai could help and then the first um, application and it's also the first um, the very first application that has been very mature in china uh, since uh, five years ago uh, as the facial recognition uh, technology become the first um, first mature uh, technology in AI. So we have applied it in the EKYC uh, solution. So uh, electronically uh, know your customer. So actually it's been used in a lot of different sectors. Uh, so for this example is about uh, WeBank. So this is the first uh, online bank in, in China. Actually it has zero a physical counter every uh, every single business from this bank is online so the customer it needs to come to open an account it goes online and then it needs a login it goes online and then it needs to uh, uh, do every single uh, transaction with the with the bank it goes online so but the the requirement for the banking is to say is this customer a real customer if i cannot even see you so the solution is actually based on facial neck recognition as one of the, well, let's say, uh, safest and also efficient way to be verified online. Facial recognition has been very, very uh, um, much deployed in this scenario, uh, not only in the bank, also in uh, governmental uh, internet service, also in uh, telco companies. So each time you need to do something, you don't want to go to the counter anymore. You, you just want to do it online. And then uh, systematically, the system asks you to verify yourself by face. So this is already, uh, let's say, default in, in China. So this is the first application. And it can much, re much reduce a lot of stuff, uh, especially uh, offline. And then the second one is the uh, city governance. So uh, especially about uh, a crown, especially about the public security, about the traffic. Uh, so um, before AI, so no other ways could really actually collect uh, uh, enough accurate data to do this kind of governance. So we know that a lot of cities are experiencing uh, uh, traffic jams, uh, experiencing a lot of uh, people uh, crowning and also we need to we need to have a solution for that so uh, with a lot of cameras uh, with a lot i'm saying let's say uh, hundreds of millions of cameras installed in the city so actually we could know exactly how the traffic goes on how the crowd is going on and this is an example uh, in the uh, in the beijing uh, subway Actually, we could see uh, people are waiting for the for the uh, for the train arriving, and then by using the AI, we could actually count how many people are waiting, 
and also we could know how many people are going to transfer and even how many people are getting on and off. So the accuracy is um, well quite okay, but not 100% all right. But uh, actually, it's already quite enough for um, for the management to know uh, how to adjust their timetables, how to make estimations about their flow, and then to avoid safety issues and also to plan about how their uh, subway are going to be built. So this is the second application. And it's also, it's very, very mature. It's already uh, everywhere in China, especially in the big cities. And then the third one, uh, it's the chatbot. Sorry, yes. may I interrupt? Uh, can, can we request you to wrap up please in one minute? Thank you. Sorry. Uh, can we request you to wrap up, please? Ah, so, okay. In a Thank you. Yeah. Um, the third application is about chatbot. So uh, based on the NLP technology, so which is uh, uh, the the which is understanding how the the human language uh, works. The bot can actually help to uh, avoid a lot of the repetitive questions. So as we know, the call center has been a very, very heavy uh, uh, department in a lot of uh, business, such as financial, uh, such as telco, uh, uh, such as internet service uh, companies. So those companies, they, also, they, are, they already have a very big call center and then that has been a very big burden for them. But actually from the chatbot point of view. So uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the questions has been very repetitive. And also uh, we could say a lot of customers are also asking uh, stupid questions. So the chatbot can actually avoid uh, the humans to just uh, doing this kind of repetitive job. So this is an example in, the, uh, in a bank that we uh, have deployed the chatbot. The, the customers are going to um, uh, ask questions from their website, uh, from phone calls, from mobile app. And then all these kind of questions are going to be uh, flowing into the chatbot first. The chatbot is going to uh, look at those questions and then uh, repeat by the pre-designed questions as they understand how the clients say. And then there are only 9% of the consulting are going to uh, be manual, are going to the manual service. So it's like, uh, if you are, can still not answer the question by chatbot, there are only 9% of the consulting goes to manual. So that means you could save 91% uh, of the human uh, labor to, uh, for this call center. And then that is a huge reduce for the, uh, for the cost. And then uh, with the chatbot, the, actually the, the customers, they also get a lot of uh, satisfaction since they could be answered very quickly. The chatbot is instinct. And then the human beings can have uh, a better uh, service if they could not answer those complex questions. So the chatbot service still gets a very high satisfaction for the customer. And then this kind of application has been uh, very mature in a lot of uh, uh, companies in China. And then uh, especially uh, after the pandemic, this has been even more widely deployed uh, since the call center has been a very dangerous place for, uh, for people. Uh, the last one is uh, also a very mature application. It's about machine learning. And then this is also an, an example uh, combined with uh, IoT and with a lot of sensors. So this example, uh, it's actually about Sunny, uh, one of the uh, one of the most one of the biggest uh, heavy machinery uh, providers in China. So what they sell is uh, the heavy machineries like uh, diggers uh, to uh, a lot of uh, construction companies. So their previous business model is to actually doing uh, let's say. Uh, it's called one-time business. It's after you sell it, it's their it's their customer's uh, property, and then uh, the provider doesn't know how they are using it, and then they have no clue about how it's being used, and they don't even know if it's being used. So actually, they have applied a lot of um, IoT sensors in their uh, in their digger, and also they have uh, make the data. Um, 
upload it to the cloud to make everything online. And then with all those kind of uh, data and also machine learning algorithm, they could actually uh, know how their machine performs. And then with this data, they could even do uh, the fault prediction. And so if their machine goes uh, something wrong, they could, they could even predict it like six and a half hours ago. So with that uh, time, they could send an engineer to do service job. So that totally changes their business model. So before they just sell one-time business, one-time equipment, but then they could uh, rent and also they could do a service uh, job. So that becomes a totally, let's say like a cloud computing, that becomes totally a service, is not a product anymore. So this completely changes their business model. So this kind of example has been very, um, very, uh, very, usual in a lot of, uh, uh, especially manufacturing area uh, in China. So this is also a very uh, mature application for machine learning. And then um, let's look at um, two examples about some uh, latest, um, some later uh, application. So the first one is actually the AI uh, in the pandemic. So as we know, the pandemic has, uh, has attracted a lot of uh, panic and also social impact uh, globally. Uh, China has been one of the most um, infected but uh, fastest uh, uh, recovered country. Uh, the AI has been contributed to this recovery in, in two ways. So the first one is in the medical side. It's to actually help the doctors. And the, the other one is the urban governance to actually help the government to uh, manage people, to actually know uh, where the people are. So on the medical side, Tencent has been uh, invested in AI and also with the medical team to uh, actually working on two uh, projects. The first one is to um, using AI to predict the drug discovery. So actually the drug uh, discovery is uh, not easy job. So uh, what they basically do is to try a lot of uh, molecule uh, combinations. So for each molecule combinations, uh, the doctors are going to uh, look at a lot of properties uh, such as absorption, uh, such as uh, dis distribution, such as uh, if it's toxic, etc., etc. So this job has been very repetitive, but it has also a pattern. So using AI, they could actually uh, leverage this pattern and also make it much, much faster. So uh, Tencent has been invested in this with uh, our medical team to help find drugs and to cure the uh, coronavirus much uh, quicker. And then this the second one is to actually uh, based by uh, computer vision. So that is to, uh, that is to do uh, the chest CT image analysis. Uh, since we know that the coronavirus is a uh, um, pneumonia, so uh, the um, CT job is also very heavy in the hospitals, especially uh, during the pandemic. So a lot of patients are uh, throwing in the hospital and then the doctors are having no time to actually read the CT images one by one. So the um, Tencent AI could actually help to actually diagnose the the coronavirus very quickly. So the CT images are going to be processed first by the AI, and then if it has a problem, and then it goes to the doctor. So this makes much more uh, efficient. And then it could identify the coronavirus in uh, one minute by uh, all these kind of CT images. So that already increases a lot of the efficiency. And then on the other side for the urban governance, the the government is uh, doing a lot of uh, job uh, to manage people, to uh, help people to stay uh, inside and then to not going out outside and also to check the status of every citizen. So that is a very, very big job. So how do they do that? We have two applications in AI, uh, which helps them to do. Uh, the first one is also based on chatbot, as we have pretty uh, previously mentioned. So uh, as we said, the call center has been almost empty during the pandemic. So how the 
government staff uh, contact everyone and also check their body status and also to uh, know if they have been uh, have been to the infected area so that is based on the chatbot we have used the voice chatbot to call uh, every citizen and then to make uh, to uh, record every answer that that is pre-designed to make a very efficient uh, uh, information collect. So after this, it's about 100 um, times more efficient than uh, human beings. So with all this kind of information collect and also all these efforts by uh, by machine and human, so uh, our government has established a very strong uh, uh, control over human, over people, and also over over the flow. Uh, the second one is also based on the computer vision, which is uh, by the infrared camera, and then to detect if your temperature is uh, it's high enough to uh, to be uh, to be a potential uh, coronavirus uh, uh, infected. So this has been already uh, deployed in almost every single building in China. Uh, even for now, it's still uh, on running. Uh, even there is uh, very little. Uh, cases in China, it's still there. And then every time there is a problem, it's going to say uh, uh, it's very, very efficiently detected. Um, the last example, it's actually about, uh, let's say, AI for fuel. So uh, what what is FEW? So that is actually food, uh, energy, and water. So uh, all those three uh, big subjects are the uh, world's wise uh, concern uh, for human uh, for human being for the whole human species. Uh, actually, Tencent has also been invested AI technology uh, for uh, trying to solve these kind of problems. So we have a good example in the uh, smart agriculture. So that is to using AI to grow uh, grow tomatoes. So this is an uh, actually a challenge that we have uh, uh, Tencent have been participating with the uh, Wageningen University uh, in in Holland. So uh, this is the second challenge, which is to grow uh, cherry tomatoes. And then we have actually been uh, using machine learning and also IoT sensors in the greenhouse, and then to monitor and also simulate how the uh, tomatoes grow. So actually, we could. Uh, 84 growth, growth cycles within 15 seconds. So that is very efficient to know how the um, how every grow will be. And then we could adjust our planting strategies by the reinforcements learning. And so with this uh, strategy applied, we have actually 121% uh, net profit increase per move so uh, as a result so this has been uh, uh, just um, a trial for uh, doing smart agriculture It's still not really uh, largely deployed but we think the ai for fuel is going to be a huge topic and also going to be very useful uh, for the whole human being uh, wellness Okay, and then at last, uh, we are going to show uh, some of the uh, our opinions in the uh, in the next two to three years about AI. So, we have uh, identified five uh, biggest chains for uh, for the AI. The AI is going to be um, accelerate. Uh, that's for sure for deployment and commercialization, but it will be under certain. Uh, and clear boundaries because AI has experienced a lot of um, doubts and also uh, a lot of problems, especially uh, on the ethics and also uh, um, and also uh, for the safety uh, problems. So we have identified five. The first one is uh, monetization of uh, computer vision application with compliance. So the computer vision has been the most uh, mature application for a long time. Uh, and it's going to be uh, the first uh, ones that's going to uh, the public, uh, let's say, uh, companies, startups. But the complies, compliance rules are going to be applied very soon, uh, especially in the European and also Western countries. Uh, but even in China, we have also a lot of rules which are uh, going on for, um, for struggling, for regulating the computer vision applications. 
And then the second one is the uh, generative uh, artificial intelligence. So as we say, the, uh, the AI has been already around the sensing for a long time, around what we, uh, what we feel and what we see and also what we, uh, what we hear. But for generative artificial intelligence, the technology has been quite mature. And then there is going to be a lot of new applications coming out. And then the second one, the third one, it's about the composite AI for IoT and also even black blockchain. Uh, blockchain has been leveraged uh, in a very high level in China. Uh, even this year, we have already been uh, experiencing, uh, experimenting the, uh, the the digital currency uh, based on blockchain. So we think there are going to be a lot of new applications based on this uh, composite uh, uh, solutions. And then for the fourth, the laws and the regulations, as we have mentioned many times, is they are going to come out by uh, government to uh, actually regulate how people are going to use AI, how the, uh, the technology companies are going to develop AI. And then the fifth, it's about uh, uh, the data elements uh, sharing. So we know that to develop more AI and then to unlock more uh, applications, AI is still very dependent on the data. So uh, there is a, a new way of uh, machine learning, which is called federated learning. It's a very good way to uh, make use of the data of the others and then to make their own models. But under certain rules. So this is going to be uh, quite common. And then we have see a chain to see uh, this as a solution to solve the lack of data for every uh, technology company. And then this could be, if this could work together, then we are going to see a lot of more applications coming out based on this. So uh, this is um, what I'm have to share out today and uh, thank thank you for your time and your attention uh, i yeah i think um very glad to be here today thank you so much um and